We're going to upgrade an Asus TP401MA. It's called a VivoBook Flip 14. This is a budget 2-in-1 laptop. The beauty of it is that it has a pretty good processor and enough RAM to run Windows. And very unusual, an M.2 slot for an SSD. So we're going to upgrade to using an SSD as the boot drive. The 64GB EMMC storage that's built into it will be moved to a secondary storage role. The first thing we need to do is power the computer all the way down. Now we need to remove the bottom. There are three different kinds of screws that hold the bottom on. The screws at the hinge edge and the middle are long. The center and the front edge are a little shorter, so I'll put these into separate piles. I'm using a number one Phillips screwdriver to do this. Always use the largest screwdriver that will fit into a Phillips screw, so you don't get those ragged edges on the screw from using a screwdriver that's too small. Okay, all the screws are out. There's a screw under each back foot, just at the hinged edge of the foot. Peel it back from the hinge edge until you can get to the screw. Don't peel the feet all the way off. You don't want your feet falling off later. Your mother will yell at you, I told you not to take the computer apart. Why did you take the computer apart? You can use one of these little kits of tools that you buy for working on tablets to release the bottom of the laptop. They're like two bucks on eBay but I just use my fingernails. If you feel around the edge, there's usually a spot where you can get in. Then slide around the edge and the bottom pops off. Now here's a really important thing to prevent a catastrophe. We need to make sure the mainboard is completely powered down. So first we disconnect the battery. The connector on these batteries doesn't just pull out. I'll show a close up of it. It has a clip on top that slides back and then the connector lifts up away from the board. Now to discharge any capacitors, I'll hold down the power button for a few seconds. Now it's time to install the SSD. I'll just move this bit of tape out of the way. Touching the metal chassis of the computer equalizes the charge between me and the computer, so it's a good idea to do that as you're working. The SSD I'm putting in is the Western Digital Blue 250GB SATA 3. The M.2 socket in this computer has an M slot, in theory, it will take either a SATA or a PCIe SSD, but all the specs I looked at said SATA 3, and I wanted to make sure this worked. The Western Digital Blue has excellent speed, and it's low-powered, which is important for battery life. This one averages about a sixteenth of a watt by the specs. To install the SSD, you just push it into the socket, and I'm fastening it with a 2mm camera screw, because I have a few of them kicking around. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. The drive will be held in place when you reattach the bottom of the case. So that's the hardware installation done. Now I'll reconnect the battery and I'll make sure I slide that little clip back. And I'm just going to put the bottom back on for testing. I'm not putting the screws in yet. I'll do that later. Just to make sure everything works. The next step is to clone the old hard drive over to the new one. So I restart the computer and I'm using the Ezus to do backup software. It's free software and it includes a disk clone function. It's really easy to use. You just click system clone. The boot drive is automatically selected as the source drive and then you select the SSD as the target. Then you just keep clicking next. When it starts it takes a while so I'm gonna go for some tea. Okay I'm back and we're at 63 percent. Time for a cookie. And now we're done. Uh, the uh, to-do cloning software creates an exact clone of the boot drive, including even the partition size. So see, it shows two identical drives here in Windows Explorer. So what we need to do is enlarge the partition of the new SSD to fill the whole drive. So just open Computer Management. You can search for it in Cortana by that name and then click Disk Management here on the left. Notice the SSD has a big unallocated space here. So just right click the Windows partition and click Extend Volume. The default will be to make the partition fill the whole drive, so just leave it like that and click Next. Then you click Finish and it's done. Now if I go back to Windows Explorer, 
uh, I have to refresh the view up here. And you'll see that now the drive is showing 232 gigabytes. The last step is to make the SSD the boot drive. So now what I need to do is shut down the computer and then boot into the BIOS. I press F2 repeatedly until the BIOS screen comes up. Now I'll drag the new SSD into the top position to make it the default boot drive. To save the changes, I press F10 and then OK. The new SSD will automatically be renamed the C drive and the EMMC drive will be the D drive. And you can just leave it like that. Leave the D drive as a backup boot drive or maybe so you can restore the computer back to factory condition later if you want to. So I'm satisfied that everything's working now, so I'm going to put the screws back in. Peel the foot back just enough to get the screws back in. Don't give in to the temptation to leave these screws out. They help to make the hinge brackets more stable. Then put in the rest of the screws. Okay, I've rebooted, and I have the speed comparisons here on the screen. I saved a picture of the speed test on the original EMMC here on the left. And on the right is the complete SSD speed test. You can see it's anywhere from two to five times faster than the original. Plus I have all that extra storage space now. We're done. Please like the video if you found it helpful. As always, leave feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching.